Hello YouTube, Luke Goss here from Tower of Ganon, and I'll be doing a walkthrough for the original Legend of Zelda. As soon as you get into the game, walk north into a cave to meet Old Man, he'll give you the wooden sword. Old Man's very interesting character, we'll be running into him a lot. Press A to use the sword, and later on B will be secondary items once we get some, one of those. The first thing we'll be doing is getting some secondary items and bombs. Here we have Octorox, the most recognisable Zelda enemy in every game except for Twilight Princess. So just kill them, hope for some rupees, flashing ones are worth one, plain blue ones are worth five. We want 20 rupees to buy the bombs. Here we have Tech Tarots, kind of a little bit more complex than beating Octorox, they jump around the screen a bit more, but nothing you can't handle. Here's some more tech types, and you'll also notice not only do enemies drop rupees, they can also drop clocks, which freezes the screen, nothing can move, they drop hearts, like this there, which restore one heart, and fairies, which restore all of your hearts. And here we have levers, which are my most hated Zelda enemies, they're just rather frustrating, especially in this game. They're in Operator of Time as well, they're not as frustrating there, but... You know, stuff happens. There are also Zolas on these screens. They appear in later Zelda games, although under a different name of the Zoras. And you can't really do much about them. You can kill them with sword beams, but you can't do anything about their fireballs, and it's just really a waste of time, so just avoid those. Um, enemies can also drop bombs, which is what we're looking for, but you can also buy them for 20 rupees, so that's what we'll be doing. And here we have blue Octorox, which are more strong than the original red Octorox. Oh, these, that Octorox just dropped some bombs, so I will still be going to the store, but... Oh, I now have full bombs. Um, I'll still show you where the store is in case you're not quite so lucky. Um, so we need the bombs to get to the first container heart, which will give you four hearts instead of three. Um, there are also two other items in the shop, the magical shield, which is very helpful, blocks the Zola's fireballs, but we can't afford it yet, plus it is cheaper in a different shop. It also sells the arrows, which we can't use until we get the bow, obviously. Um, so, you just go into that shop, to the cave to the north, after you've killed all these Octoroks, and you'll be sweet. I always found it weird that the shop only sold three items, but, you know, Whatever, if that works. Um, the most rupees you can actually hold in the game are 255, which is a bit of an odd number, but it's got something to do with the uh, Ness's number holding capability. Um, you'll notice all the enemies have not respawned, that's because I already killed them, and um, they do respawn eventually, but yeah. Um, so now that we've got the bombs, we can press B to use those. So just go over this wall, place a bomb there to create a cave. In the cave, Old Man will be there, and who will offer you a choice between a container heart and a potion. Why anyone would take the potion, I really don't know, but, you know. Once we've got the container heart from Old Man, leave the cave and go north. Now, we can get some more rupees, another container heart, and some items before the next dungeon, so we could go there now if we wanted to, but why go when you're not as prepared as you could be? So here we have um, some moblins, very common with other enemies, they're creatures shaped in Ganon's image, so any game that has Ganon has moblins, and if you're a Zelda fan you'll know that almost all the games have moblins in them, so um, go up from here, we're just going to go around and try and collect some rupees as you do, and um, we'll be buying the blue candle which allows us to light up dark rooms and also gives us access to, to some more secrets. There's no real need to kill the moblins here, but you know, we are saving up rupees, so why not? Here you must touch the Armos statue on the right. Armos are in a fair few Zelda games. Not nearly as common as some other enemies, but they make their appearances. 
Um, they're pretty much statues that animate in different ways, triggered by different things. In this game, they move around when you touch them. You never really have to kill them, just touch them and avoid them. They often sit on top of secrets though, so... See that? You just go under those stairs after you've touched them. Now we find a secret moblin, which are very helpful guys all over the overworld. Give you some rupees ranging from 10 to 100 rupees. Um, the right armor statue also holds the um, secret moblin here. It's a 30 rupee secret moblin, so, you know, not too shabby. Um, I've got a clock here, so I'm going to kill both the armor statues just to show that they can be defeated even though you never really ever need to. So, get the rupees off the secret moblin, what a considerate old guy. Now, go up from here, there are blue octorox and red octorox and a zola. Um, kill the octorox, get some rupees, and then once you're done with that, put a bomb on the wall to the top here, and that will unveil another secret moblin. Yeah, they're all over the place, I know, but trust me, you never get sick of them. This little guy gives you another 30 rupees. They're very helpful. The next secret mob we'll find is actually 100 rupees, but for the moment, put a bomb on the rock in the middle of this screen to uncover Old Man. Again, he'll give you the choice between the red potion and the container heart. Never take the red potion, just don't. I took it once when I was playing through just to see, but it just never made sense, so maybe you could get the container heart later on or something, but no, it just, I really don't know why it's there, maybe to trick noobs. Anyway, pick up the container heart and leave the cave. From here you want to go right one screen and then up. We're going to go to a secret passage and we will get 100 rupees from a secret moblin. I always thought the secret moblin was very interesting. It's very hard to get to because there's just an invisible staircase in the wall up here. And where he is looks a lot like an entrance to a dungeon. Yep, it's just his little cave, so maybe he's got a lot more than 100 rupees lying around if you can pimp out his cave like that. So yeah, there's a still hair cave hidden staircase, and you go in here to the moblin, who will give you 100 rupees. It should be around 200 rupees, it doesn't really matter if you're not. The blue candle is 60 rupees, I just thought, might as well get the rupees while we're in the area. Also, we will be getting the magical shield very soon. You can get it right now if you want, because it's in the same shop as the blue candle. If you have 220 rupees, you can get them both, but it's kind of stupid considering you can get the magical shield in a shop pretty soon for 90 rupees, so I recommend saving your rupees, but I'm not you, so you can do whatever you want, really. Um, go up these stairs, kill the tech types that are up here, more red tech types. Tech types annoy me as well, but not as much as levers, I just, I really cannot stand levers. Now uh, you see, I got into a corner there and the tech type jumped on me, you've got to be careful about that, but, you know. Now, they're a lot harder to take out without sword beams, as you see, I took a fair bit of damage there, but, um, you know, when you do have sword beams, just stay back and take them out from afar, because, you know, slow and steady wins the rest. This will be the last thing we do in this chapter, just pick up the blue candle, and I'll see you next time. Bye.